Hello, it's Bruce Williams, and today I would like to present part three on my series of the selected gross pathology of the GI system. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about conditions affecting the teeth. As I do at the beginning of all of my lectures, I want to thank my friends and colleagues who provided me images directly and through online collections over the years, which allow me to put these little lectures together. And I'm going to start with a picture by an outstanding pathologist and photographer, Dr. Donald O'Toole of the Wyoming State Veterinary Laboratory. And we are looking at the maxilla of a calf, probably a red Angus calf. And you'll notice that in this uh, probably stillborn animal, there is no eruption of the teeth. Of course, when we look at the dental pad, we're not expecting them to be there to be any incisors in the maxilla, but certainly you should have eruption of the molars at this point, and they have not appeared. In red Angus calves, this is usually associated with a condition known as osteopetrosis, which affects a number of bones, including the long bones and the bones of the face. And osteopetrosis is the result of a genetic defect in the slick 4A gene, which causes acidification at the ruffled border of the osteoclast and is necessary for remodeling of bone. And so the bones in this animal are not remodeled. They have very thick cores of unremodeled primary spongiosa. And even though they have all of this bone, the bone marrow cavities and the long bones aren't really even there. Um, they're extremely brittle. And one of the things that it does, in addition to cause mark shortening, some twisting, uh, shortening of the, uh, the maxilla and the mandible, um, is it prevents the teeth from erupting. So I generally in cattle have two rule outs for a lack of eruption of the teeth. One is going to be osteopetrosis. Don't forget osteopetrosis is also seen in birds, but that's due to viral infection and not due to a genetic defect. The second cause of a lack of teeth, either hypodontia or anodontia, in this picture also by Dr. O'Toole, is a condition known to veterinarians as anodontia hypotrichosis complex, but also mimics a human condition known as X-linked ectodermal dysplasia. Here we see a young male calf with no hair. It is quite likely that he also has no teeth or fewer teeth uh, than normal and also no equine sweat glands on the nose. Being an X-linked defect, the trait is carried by the mother is passed on generally to bull calves and is seen in a number of breeds uh, including Holsteins, Angus, uh, uh, etc. It has incomplete penetrance, so you can see animals that have a very sparse hair coat. You can see animals that have some teeth. So there's a lot of variations. It is not considered, except possibly in a case like this, a fatal defect. The genetic defect uh, is in ectodysplasin A, a gene that uh, moderates interactions between the uh, ectoderm and the mesoderm whose interactions are responsible for the development of the skin, the hair, nails, teeth, and sweat glands. Here's a quickie, okay? Uh, as in people, when your adult teeth come in, your baby teeth are supposed to go out. Sometimes they don't due to a malposition. Usually the erupting adult teeth will press on the root of the, uh, the deciduous teeth causing resorption, eventually the teeth fall out. If not, in horses, this is known as a retained cap. Okay, we are looking at the, uh, the teeth of a dog, and you can see that there are significant defects within the enamel. They're not complete. A part of the crown is covered with enamel, and this is seen as a result of in utero infection with canine distemper. A similar lesion is seen in calves infected in utero uh, with bovine pestivirus, a cause of agent of BVD. 
Some people believe that the defect is not the result of viral infection per se, but uh, a f severe fever of the dam, but uh, certainly viral infection makes a little more sense. Enamel is formed before eruption of the teeth, and it is formed by a, a, uh, uh, an organ which is known as the enamel organ, which results from the fusion of the inner and outer layers of the enamel uh, epithelium. And there's a layer in between called the stratum intermedium. This is a layer of the developing tooth that is often uh, infected by viruses such as distemper or pestivirus. And if you get degeneration necrosis, uh, it allows connective tissue to uh, touch the developing enamel and, and the remnants of the enamel organ, and the enamel is resorbed or it's covered with dentin, something normal in horses but not normal in cattle or dogs. As you can see, it's not a complete defect because following viral infection, um, ameloblasts can regenerate. They will continue to uh, lay enamel further on down the tooth. So this is the result of the infection of the stratum intermedium of the enamel organ. And here is a picture of a similar thing in uh, a calf infected with BVD. For those of you looking for a good morphologic diagnosis, how about focal or multifocal to coalescing enamel aplasia? If you want to say hypoplasia, I suppose that would be good. That would be talking about the uh, tooth in toto. Here's an absolutely marvelous picture of a cat with a condition known as congenital erythrocytic porphyria. This condition is seen in cats, in cattle, and occasionally in pigs and other species. It is a congenital defect in uroporphyringin 3 cosynthetase. Uroporphyringin 3 cosynthetase is one of the enzymes responsible for the synthesis of heme in erythrocytes. And if this is missing, then you have excessive levels of uroporphyrinogens, which will circulate in the blood and will settle into the bones and the teeth. In humans, this particular condition is called erythrodontia. Now, histologically, there is absolutely no change in the affected bones and teeth. They're just discolored a brownish purple. And this is also from a cat. And you can see that the coloration is not only in the teeth, but in the bones. Not a very common condition. I think there is still a colony of cats maintained that have this particular condition. Cats are a little different than other species in that, uh, like man, they do develop a low to moderate grade hemolyconemia, which is often not seen in cattle or pigs with a similar condition. Another cool part about this condition is that the, uh, the pigment will fluoresce under ultraviolet light in this picture from a calf with congenital erythrocytic porphyria. Um, in cattle, it also is responsible for photosensitization and is the only entity in the classification of the type 2 photosensitizations. Talk about uh, little baby pigs for a minute. Baby pigs have very sharp teeth um, on either side and the front. These are called the milk teeth. I don't know why they call them the milk teeth, but it's very common for farmers to clip them because they're sharp. They will uh, lacerate the nipples of the sow. The sow will not want to uh, nurse the pigs with that. And she can get uh, infectious causes of mastitis due to secondary infection by a number of ubiquitous organisms in the environment, staph, strep, fuse, bacteria. Um, so these are generally clipped. Usually it doesn't cause too much of a problem. But if they are clipped too closely as seen here, or they are broken off, those same agents, particularly Fusobacterium necrophorum, which is omnipresent in the environment because it is a GI tract commensal, is present in all poop, will get up into the sinus 
and cause a condition known in pigs as necrotic rhinitis or also known as bull nose where it forms a large foul smelling largely anaerobic area of suppuration and necrosis. Here is the large abscess and here are the turbinates for comparison. Here's an upside down picture of the incisors from an ox and you can see that there is pitting of the enamel with a dentin showing through. This is enamel dysplasia and or hypoplasia and it is acquired from exposure to fluoride. <clears throat> Affected teeth and bones do not have the strength of, uh, of normal teeth. Oftentimes the enamel and the uh, bone is sort of uh, flaky, white, and brittle. Affected bones often will uh, develop marked periosteal uh, bone growth especially uh, uh, distal to the carpus and tarsus as it tries to uh, stabilize itself. What happens in the teeth is generally the enamel that is produced is of low quality and normal mastication will result in a shearing and breaking off of the uh, tubules and exposure of the underlying dentin. This is another case here where you can see large areas of the enamel that have cracked and broken off and the enamel is not able to be f formed after that so the dentin shows through. It is not only uh, a disease of cattle. Here is a horse which is affected um, with fluorosis and it can be seen in a number of species including rabbits which have a very interesting uh, uh, lesion we'll see later on when we get to the stomach where they get mineralization of the stomach wall in association with the bone and teeth abnormalities which are characteristic of fluorosis. Here is a guinea pig that looks pretty happy. It's jumping up and down but actually it's not. What I want you to look at is this greenish discoloration um, by the mouth which means that it is having trouble eating its food largely due to malocclusion. The condition is known in guinea pigs as slobbers. They have this greenish discoloration uh, on the outside of the mouth. They drool, they spit their food out. And when we talk about malocclusion, we're usually talking about rodents and lagomorphs. We'll also talk about some special forms of malocclusion, which we see in the horse, but the common denominator between all these species is that their teeth after eruption will grow during the course of their lifetime. And that's okay as long as they meet in the mouth um, on a very appropriate angles and they will wear down uh, each other and you won't have a problem. However, if uh, there are missing teeth or in the rabbit, which is the only species that has been documented, to my knowledge, that have craniofacial abnormalities resulting in a slightly longer maxilla, which can be measured by the diastema between the incisors and the molars, then you end up with continued tooth growth and malocclusion. Because these teeth can grow two to four millimeters a month, they have to be regularly trimmed, and that can be a real problem. And I got millions of pictures of malocclusion and it can affect both the incisors as well as the cheek teeth. And here we have a rabbit in which the cheek teeth have been, uh, uh, they don't meet closely and we have marked uh, extension of, of spurs um, on the
But as we, uh, as we talk a little bit about ameloblastoma, these particular tumors um, are odontogenic. They are usually seen in the dog and the cat and the horse. Um, and usually you will have palisading areas of uh, uh, enamel forming tissue. Now the problem in underneath the microscope is enamel is usually washed away during preparation. But, and they may keratinize, which makes them somewhat difficult to identify in some cases or distinguish from squamous cell carcinoma. There is no induction of, of mesenchyme. There is no structures within that will resemble teeth. Here's a nice picture of one from uh, Dr. Richard Jakowski of Tufts University, which has resulted in, in uh, significant remodeling uh, in this area of the jaw. But there's nothing that you would call a, a tooth or a denticle or a mineralized substance. And generally, there's not any mineralization of anything. So, But in the horse, if it's not squamous cell carcinoma, it is usually this. Very rarely will you see tumors that have what are what structures which resemble teeth which some people call denticles these would fall into the category of odontomas either complex or compound odontomas they're somewhat species specific um, the complex odontomas will have somewhat disorganized balls of dental hard substance which don't which definitely will become mineralized. You'll see foci of dentin and enamel, which just doesn't have a structure. The compound odontomas are the ones that get closest to teeth. Um, and these are, are tooth-like structures with pulp with a fairly regular uh, organization of uh, dentin and enamel. Um, compound odontomas are usually seen in dogs, not so often in horses. So, so grossly, I would probably put this in the uh, uh, the, the camp of the complex odontomas, which we see in dogs, in rodents, in primates, and in horses. So you need to know a little bit about what to expect, um, but obviously these are two tumors are very difficult to diagnose, and, and microscopic examination is always required for a proper diagnosis. Here's a great picture by Richard Irvine up in Glasgow. And uh, this is an ox, uh, the most common uh, odontogenic tumor in cattle is an amyloblastic fibroma. This is one that doesn't have any hard substance, and I think the name's very descriptive. You have a lot of uh, mesenchymal tissue throughout. You'll find some ribbons of, of cells resembling the epithelium of the enamel organ, but there is really no formation of, uh, of teeth in this. The loosely arranged mesenchyme will occasionally form areas that sort of resemble dental pulp, or maybe I'm just trying a little too hard. This is also from an ox, and it's an absolutely great picture taken, I think, by David Dodd many years ago, 1964. And look at this neoplasm, which is sort of incorporating other teeth um, and it is a disorganized mass of enamel and, uh, and dentin and probably falls into the realm of an uh, amyloblastic fibroodontoma. But I might be tempted to put this into one of the uh, complex odontomas, although they typically aren't seen in cattle. Our last neoplasm is one in a cat, which is submitted by Dr. Fabrizio Grandi. This is an interesting tumor of young cats. This particular cat was only four months of age, and it is known as the feline inductive odontogenic tumor, or a phion. They're most commonly seen in the rostral mandible, as seen here. And it's an interesting but rare odontogenic neoplasm um, in which the odontogenic epithelium uh, has inductive potential and results in sort of aggregated foci of dental pulp-like mesenchymal cells. 
It acts in a benign but very destructive fashion and can cause resorption of the underlying bone. It needs to be excised early. Cats are sort of interesting. They have a, uh, a second very interesting tumor called the amyloid producing odontogenic tumor, which the name is a very good description of the tumor. Uh, the tumor does not induce mesenchyme like the phyots, but the apots, I like those terms, apots and phyots. Um, the apots produce amyloid, which is intermixed uh, among these sort of palisading uh, uh, cords of odontogenic epithelium. So uh, you got some interesting odontogenic tumors in cats. Well, that covers the teeth in just about 20 minutes. Uh, for me, that's one of the most confusing parts of, uh, uh, of, of veterinary pathology. I'm not a tooth guy, but I hope that uh, I at least broached a number of subjects that you found interesting, um, that you find useful, and I look forward to talking to you in our next lecture about the bones of the oral cavity, and then we'll talk a little about salivary glands as well. Thanks for your attention and have a great day.